I'm actually really pleased um, with the discussions this morning, uh, partly because sort of after the discussions yesterday, I rewrote my talk because there were some things which I felt weren't getting said. And a lot of them were said this morning, so I now need to rethink my talk again. Um, the first minor quibble I have is that I feel that the subject title of this topic was slightly wrong. Um, not just that it missed the S off the maths, um, but, <laughs> but, but, but I feel that more than this, different culture, different maths. As a mathematician, I believe in the fact that mathematics is a universal language. It doesn't matter what culture you, you, you come from. When you get to the high levels of mathematics, people communicate incredibly well. You know, they might have no other language in common, really, than their mathematical understanding. And they're able to communicate ideas and share ideas really well. And so the question we're asking isn't really about maths itself, different maths itself, it's different mathematical cultures. And I think that's a slightly important distinction to make. And so what I feel the question is, is different countries, different mathematical cultures. And that I, build, that I feel I have something to say about. So that's what I'm going to focus on. I've been involved in maths education in four countries, mainly as a student, um, but uh, also as a, a teacher. And you'll notice that Niger has two flags on it, because um, although it, I went to a French school there, which meant that I was actually experienced the French education, not the Nigerian education. And um, I had an interesting experience from this, that I feel that the key measurable um, thing you can take from a mathematical culture at schools is what happens at the transition into university, particularly to your top math students. What do your top math students at school want to go on and do at university? So I'll just mention very quickly um, what I feel are some slight differences between these four mathematical cultures, where I'll really be discussing the French culture more than the Nigerian. Um, because the top Nigerian school students go to France anyway. So, um, um, and I'll, I'll ask this question, you know, what happens, in my opinion, and it, I might be wrong, to the top math students? Some of my information is out of date. My German information is definitely from when they were still a diploma and not when they've now changed it to, to try and do BSCs. But in France, the most prized, if you want, mathematical science is engineering. And, you know, this is something where your grand école in different ways, they do, they study mathematics, or so the prepa going into the grand école, study very high level mathematics for all engineers. And it's not just mathematicians who study high level mathematics. Anyone who wants to go on and become a good engineer has to have studied really pretty high level mathematics. And, um, and, and really engineering is, is an important subject there in a way which I feel sort of surpasses its importance in the UK. In the UK, I feel that most of the really good math students want to go on and do mathematics. And there's actually a lot of people who want to go on and do mathematics. And if you take across all the different universities which offer a good maths education, there is a demand for mathematics still in the UK. And I feel this is something that the UK has been pretty good at maintaining, that demand for mathematics. Now, it might not be perfect, but if you compare it to Germany, Germany has a very good, math, or had with the diploma, a very good mathematics undergraduate education. But very few people did it. In fact, almost everybody who wanted to do a German maths diploma would go on to study mathematics. And so, a very different system again. And then, my experience in Kenya. Uh, your top math students in Kenya study actuarial scientists and become actuarial scientists. They study actuarial science. This is, to me, I think, I'm afraid, a, sim a symptom or a, of a, a mass education which is failing. And so you can see that in different ways. I like to see this as an opportunity. And I suppose I like to think of Kenya in that way. When I think of Kenya, you might think of all the nice animals that are there, all sorts of other things. When I think of Kenya, I think of Hans Rosling. And I think of the interesting story he told, which I feel changed the world of development. And the story he told was of the last 200 years, of 200 countries in 200 years in four minutes. He told it before that in TED Talks and so on. But um, what he basically said is that 
our view, our understanding of the world was of a developed world and of a developing world. And that was what it was in the 1960s. You had your developed nations and then you had a big group of developing nations. And what has happened since is that the world's more spread out, but generally speaking, people do seem to be heading towards a much more developed world. There are many problems which are coming along with this, but I want to be optimistic about this, that this actually, what he is looking at here is both health and wealth, and things are getting better. And the biggest changes have come mainly in Southeast Asia, in different ways, where within a generation, you have had this fundamental change which has come about within society. And, and I look and see where, where were the next countries which might be able to have that change. And that's part of the reason I'm in Kenya. I hope, you know, the change within Southeast Asia has to slow down. It cannot keep going at this pace, in a sense. The same as, as has happened in Europe and the States and other Western nations. Kenya is on the borderline now. It's still neither healthy nor wealthy in, 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 the, in, in, this, in this context. And it's ready for that change, and you can feel it in the society. The society is building to that change. This is an environment where change is possible, and it can happen fast. For people who want to have such a radical change in maths education, these might be interesting places to work. And I hope this is something that we might be able to think that not just looking at sort of change where things are good, because then you can get things wrong and it has serious consequences, but change where they need to embrace change, and any change will be positive and you can learn from your mistakes and bring those lessons back. And so I'm really keen that we can take the, make the most of this opportunity, because I feel it is an opportunity. And the key to making the most of that opportunity, I feel, is has been mentioned a few times already today. Um, it's not enough to look at schools. We have to look at higher institutions of education. We have to look at making changes at all levels, I, I like to say. Um, yes, we do need to change things in school, and computer-based maths is very appropriate for that, but it's also appropriate for changing things in higher education, and that's essential, and it's not discussed enough. Um, it's important to change things to an institutional level as well. Um, so we've been trying to make initiatives or do initiatives at all of these levels. But what I actually, one of the ways I wanted to change my talk was not to focus on what we've been doing in Kenya. Um, I feel that there are some things which can be learned from that already, but I feel what's more interesting are the sort of questions that have been asked which are more global. How can we do things at all levels, and what should this mean? Computer-based maths is at the centre of this. Um, and I've heard, you know, in the governmental discussions, the fact it's very difficult to make changes at governmental level, at policy level. It might be easier in Kenya, but it's still difficult anywhere. Um, but there are things you can do, and the exams boards have been saying they're trying. They're trying to, within the current system, find ways to experiment and to give people options so that we can um, learn about it enough to try and find out how to make a more drastic change. And so I feel that's really important to be able to, at a governmental level, add to the curriculum in ways which embrace computer-based maths. Um, you can't hope to change the whole system overnight. That's not going to work, as we were sort of discussing just earlier today. But you can hope to make these small changes. Um, at undergraduate, it's really important to recognise that when we're talking about the skills that people need, um, our lawyers, some must be somewhere here, but um, we do need to get these, these issues across, particularly in the service teaching, not to the exclusion of trying to improve the maths education, but the service teaching education is not fulfilling the role it needs to. We need that service teaching to be improved. And we need to be able to do things at a master's level for postgraduates, which attract people into the subject at that level. And this is something we have been successful at in Kenya through the research methods, the rebranding of statistics as research methods, because people want to do research. 
whether they are in business, in, lawyer, in law, or in, an, in your traditional sciences, and they want the research method skills to be able to do good research. Um, that, that's what people feel they need. Um, and by rebranding some of the more traditional mathematical context, we can, get, we can get that message across and we can get people interested. And finally, there has been also talk about these independent schools and independent institutions who are able to do more radical change. Great. Let us encourage them, but let us make them case studies. Let us study them. Let us make sure that we learn from them so that when we can implement on a bigger scale, we've got some good data. And what I'm trying to suggest here is that really what we're talking about is computer-based maths is not about changing maths education. It's about changing the culture of maths education. And that this is all really about our educational culture. And, you know, there is a problem. Educational culture, maths education culture is different all over the place. But it is almost always oppressive to the innovation. We need to change that. We need to create a maths education culture which is supportive of innovation and finds ways to encourage it more than it is doing so now. And I feel that's equally true in Kenya, and I feel the opportunities are maybe greater to do things fast in Kenya, but I feel it's equally true the world over. So anyway, that's what I'd like to say. Thank you.